guys who have had experience like that to teach the kids what it means? Um, that's what's special about this program. Um, you know, we're, we're number one in the history of college baseball and draft picks and big leaguers. And we have that, that ASU family that are, that are around here that live in the Valley. And I want these guys around and, and share their experiences with them to, to just reiterate how, how special this place is. Um, you know, you get a guy like Cole Calhoun that, that respectfully, um, isn't, you know, isn't the most talented guy in the world, but has had a 10 year career plus in the big leagues. Why? Because of mindset, mentality, work ethic, all the things that we're preaching to these guys. So to have that him be around and reiterate those type of things on mentality and what it takes to be uh, a great player here and then move on and, and do it do it beyond here. Um, that That's the specialness of Arizona State. We're, we can do that where other programs don't have the, the repertoire and the the past history of players that we do, and, and that's uh, that'll always stand alone. Thomas Barnes talked earlier about understanding the winning mentality and the rest of the freshmen understanding the winning mentality of this program early. What did you do and the rest of the coaching staff to kind of instill that that message early on with that group to get them to soak it in? Uh, just just remain consistent and, and, and you know tell them that um, you know, a the door is wide open. Uh, we had a lot of our our uh, arms. Get, get picked by the draft last year and, and left. So first and foremost, you have an opportunity to, to come in and play as a freshman. Um, you know, secondly, what it takes to win as a freshman and really, you know, through, throughout your career is, is uh, just stressing the emphasis on pounding the strike zone, working ahead and, and keeping composure and trying to put them in tough situations that are, um, they're gonna be faced with, you know, and, and have to work out of those situations. So. Uh, Thomas is, is uh, the right type of kid mentality-wise, has tremendous talent, and you know, he's got a lot to learn still, but right now he's, uh, he's got a chance to be pretty special. The freshmen are getting to see a lot of the opportunities when it comes to the scrimmages, especially last week. It felt like everyone who was pitching during that scrimmage last week was a freshman. How, at least, have you seen the progression of them at least in the last couple of weeks? transition from fall to winter and how do you feel like in comparison to last week where you feel like you had a lot of options your weekend rotation do you feel like you're slowing like you feel like you have like a good idea of now what it could possibly look like do you feel like there's still time in these next two weeks to, to find it out well i think i think there's um the one thing that you do have to realize with freshmen is some weeks are going to come out and look really good and other weeks are just going to come out and not look so good and so you can't give up on them. You can't get too high and too low early on with these guys. And hopefully uh, steadiness over the course of the year wins the race and, and continue to try to improve these guys. So, you know, there, there's guys that we weren't anticipating maybe pitching a whole lot at the end of the fall that have come out and shown really good this spring. Again, you're going to have leaps and bounds because they're freshmen. They're, they're adjusting to all this stuff. Um, you know, so that's going to be a fluid thing throughout the year on you know, who our best 12 arms are and who we're going to use on any given weekend in particular and, and that's just something we're going to have to understand and not not put the expectations on these guys to go out and be dominant every outing they're going to have their pitfalls and times to where they need coaching they need they need uh, reassurance that they're good and they just have to get back on the horse and there's going to be days in baseball where you know you get your teeth kicked in a little bit but you got to bounce back so this is all a big learning thing for these guys and um, you know obviously it's a continue learning learning that adjustment for us coaches as well. And do you feel like that because of that, there will at least be in the first couple of weeks a kind of an experimenting of who can we at least try out on Fridays, Saturdays? Do you feel like at least in the first couple of weeks it's just going to be more experimenting or do you feel like it's going to be like by opening day you will have a, a solid Friday, Saturday guy already lined up? Um, you know, it, it things evolve, I think. Um, and again, from week to week, outing to outing, you can kind of see how guys are throwing the ball, how they're feeling physically. And, it's our job as coaches to make adjustments and try to put the best guys out that are going to give us a chance to win. Um, that changes from week to week, so be it. You know, um, but if it's consistent throughout the year, obviously I'd be happy. That means they're doing pretty good. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll narrow it down here in the next week or so as to who our, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday guys are looking like and, and where guys are going to best fit coming out of the pen and, and give us, again, the best chance to win games. Any update? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a dogfight in the middle. We moved some guys around. Um, we have Kevin Carstetter over there, kind of at second base now, and you 
know, Mario Demera is a, a veteran guy that can bounce in there, but our, our two freshmen have done a great job um, at nipping at the heels of the of the upperclassmen, and they're going to get playing time. You know, they've earned it, and they're, they'll be in there at some point and mixing in. So, and again, it might be one of those situations we go with the hot hand for a while and see how that goes. Yeah, but end of the day, that's um, those guys are are a um, you know, big part of. Not only this year's team, but moving forward, they're a big part of the program. You mentioned Cole Carlo, kind of the back end of that bullpen as a potential option. Who else has shown themselves as good options in the seventh day of the ninth Well, there's uh, you know a couple of our older guys that you can use in a variety of roles. Jonah Giblin, Matt Teeting, um, those type of guys. Hunter Omelet, you know, is a, is a veteran guy. Uh, Sean Fitzpatrick. Those are all guys that we can mix and match late if we have to. Wyatt Halverson is throwing the ball. I'm not sure if he's quite ready for a late inning role yet, but um, has shown promise back there. Uh, ben Jacobs is another guy with electric stuff that, that could open that back in for, for an inning or two. Um, we have some options. You know, I think uh, it's not going to be one of those things. I think we went into the year last year pretty pretty defined, seven, eight, nine. Um, I don't think we're there, you know, right now. To be honest, uh, we had Wayne Scott and then Piv and and uh, Owen Stevenson kind of to finish out games last year, and we had a pretty good recipe for that. We haven't; those roles haven't been firmly established yet, but um, hopefully we do. With such a deep lineup. Uh, where do you expect a guy like Eamon Lance, who's been around baseball, college baseball, and really good power hitter, to fill in? I think he's uh, he's a great bat. He's going to mix in DH, pinch hitting. You know, he, he's, his job's going to be up, go up and, and produce runs, um, RBIs, and in, in big situations. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, an experienced bat. That's why we got him. You know, he's a, he's an older veteran guy that knows how to hit and knows his approach. And I think he he adds uh, whether or not he's starting or that threat of coming off the bench and having a big right-handed power bat coming off the bench is. Uh, has been key. That was something we've been missing the past couple of years, and um, we're happy to have him. How reassuring is it to have a guy like Campos when you have so many young pitchers, and maybe having that sort of calming presence? Obviously, you're going up against the tough lineups in fall ball and whatnot, but it's got to be different when you get into the season. And just get come up. Yeah, I think uh, you know having a guy that's been there and done that for a couple of years and, and put up the. You know, the track record that Campy has, I think his, um, his mentality is pretty even keel, good, bad, or indifferent. And that, that having that calming presence with especially a lot of young arms is, is key, you know, just to go out and talk to those guys on occasion and slow them down, you know, settle things down. And, and Campy does a good job working behind the plate, too, and getting, getting those borderline pitches that sometimes we need. So, um, huge having him. Obviously, love that. Have you seen his routines change maybe at all from freshman year to, to now? Isaiah talked about how Campos helped him out with that a little bit. Did things like, have you talked to Campos that helped him establish some of that? Or where do you think that, that sort of originated? Uh, Joe Lampy is yeah. a big, big uh, factor. You know, those, those guys were pretty tight when Lamp was here. Um, his, Joe's work ethic was, you know, the guy's a machine. He's a motor that doesn't turn off. He's always going. and. Uh, Campy took to him, you know, pretty well, and those guys were, you know, wherever one was, the other one was, and Campy did a great job of learning from him, and now I think he's passing it down to the next generation of guys, and hopefully that's uh, that's the type of work ethic the program will hopefully continue to build upon and, and teach guys how to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. Going back to pitching for a second, Tyler Meyer mentioned on Friday that he was going to pitch on Sunday in the inter squad scrimmage. What did you see from him in his first uh, out here while in live action? From Tyler? Right? Yeah. Um, Tyler's been great. Um, his uh, his health, first and foremost, is, is back to where uh, I think where it should be. Um, and so that part of things is not a concern anymore at this point, which is obviously music to all of our ears and happy for him as it is. Uh, young man that's been through a lot um, and, and had to deal with a lot of adversity, a lot of ups and downs with it. Um, but he's, his health-wise, his, his arm strength is back to where it was pre-injury. Um, credit to, to Jesse Loman and, and Tim, our strength coach, uh, to, to get him back to where he is. Those guys have been outstanding. Um, but now it's just a matter of fine-tuning and continuing to get sharper. Um, remember Tyler, when he was at the top of his game, he was you know, very good. 
lo locating his pitches, and he's he's getting closer and closer every day with that. Um, not quite to where um, we've seen him, you know, at his best, but he's getting he's getting pretty close. So, and it's just a matter of continuing to ramp up the endurance, and hopefully he'll be in that rotation at some point during this year. And Coach, you mentioned obviously Ryan when he meets with the young guys. Like you said, with guys coming back, how much is it a comfort? Is it been a comfort just having him back there and you know learning how to work with these pitchers? Um, again, that's uh, you know an experienced veteran guy back there, and you know, Trey Newman. I'll add to that as well, as well as Josiah Cromwick. You know, those, uh, but especially Newman and Campy have been here for a couple years. They they know the pitching staff pretty well, um, and tribute to those guys. They're in the bullpen all the time, catching catching pens and staying sharp and understanding what guys pitches do, what makes them successful when they're on, when they're off, that type of thing. So uh, having that veteran presence is, is great. Coach, how does McLean's injury kind of shift things out around in the outfield? Um, it opens opportunities up for other guys. Uh, you know, Kian Vu, um, who's often not talked about enough, um, great player, and it just kind of gets overshadowed with a couple of those other guys out there. But uh, Kian's going to get an opportunity. Josiah Cromwell can play out there. Um, uh, you know, Brandon Compton, you know, maybe get an opportunity out there as well. So. It opens things up, um, you know, but but not having that that bat in the lineup and lengthening that lineup out, um, you know, that's going to leave a little bit of a mark, um, to be honest, probably. And those are big shoes to fill. But uh, like I said, the good news is we have um, we have depth to where we can withstand it. And, and you know, not that I enjoy having a guy get injured, but at least we have the depth to, to be able to to account for it and hopefully you know not lose much ground. I mean, last those. year, you guys kind of shifted Campy out to the left field quite often. Is that not a potential option? Uh, it is, certainly. Uh, we'll put him out there on occasion and give him a tray or, or uh, Cromwick or even Brody Briggs an opportunity to catch. And obviously, Campy's bat in the lineup is paramount. So if that's or better with him in left field than somebody else DHing or vice versa, we'll do that. And that's always an option. As a coach, I mean, to piggyback off that, it's always you always want the challenge of having it really tough to put a lineup card together. And like you're saying, with guys that can hit the depth you have there, how uh, how many uh, sleepless nights do you think you might have uh, putting a lineup card together? Um, you know, it, it's uh, the, the biggest challenge is going to be in trying to keep uh, all these guys sharp and fresh. You know, and, and you know, sometimes you can only put nine of them out there. And, and so that's uh, that's the challenge that I have is you know which nine to go out there which one gives us the best opportunity to win you know every day and for me that might be there might be a very talented guy or two that aren't playing and that's going to be tough um, and maybe guys that aren't used to not playing they're going to have to adjust to that and uh, that'll be the challenge for me and my coaching staff to, to figure out on a daily basis who's, who's going to give us the best chance to win each game how do you feel like the shortstop situation is kind of uh, taking shape with odino out there and then ryan obviously you know coming in as a freshman uh, how do you feel like that's kind of taking shape so far I mean, I think those those guys. I wouldn't hesitate putting either one of them out there. And they're they're both capable of doing great things. Uh, you know, Stevens, um, you know, he, he's pretty flashy. He can pick it up and, and get it across the diamond pretty well, and make some really outstanding plays. Jax is more of the steady Eddie. Isn't gonna um, draw like a lot of attention to you with his quick actions, but the kid just continues to make play after play after play. Uh, consistently, which is what you ask for your shortstop. So um, both of those guys are in the mix and are going to continue to fight for playing time all year long. It's so much unknown at the moment as far as how pitching is going to play out for the early season. Um, what are you just wanting to see from the group early on and just the team as a whole to further the season? I think uh, just clean play. Um, you know, I don't, I don't care so much about punch outs and, and striking guys out as I do about just throwing the ball plate and, and not beating yourself. Um, throwing strikes, working ahead, um, you know, forcing early contact, and then hopefully playing good, solid defense behind them. Uh, to me, you don't have to have the, the electric repertoire. What good does that do if you can't throw it across the plate, right? So that's what we're trying to preach to these guys, and, and especially the young guys. We understand we're going to have some ups and downs with them. And, there's going to be times where they, they lose it a little bit. It's okay, but as long as they keep competing and trying to throw the ball over the plate or give the other eight guys out there a chance to, to field the ball, we'll be okay. Yeah.
you mentioned during the fall that uh, Newkin Charles was getting some reps in a couple other positions. Uh, do you see that kind of coming into effect this year, or not? Not really. Not really. Uh, it was too good over at third base for me to to move him off of there. Um, he's capable of playing second, capable of playing. I think he's even capable of playing short, um, center field. Obviously, would be a tremendous Probably put him behind the plate if you really needed to. Um, tremendously athletic, but uh, he's he's just too good over third for me to move him off. The hot he's too valuable there. Then talk about defense. I mean, the defense obviously grew last year. Definitely had it. How do you see the defense growing this year? Um, you know, continuing to to make the routine plays. You know, that's um, you know, we've had a little bit of a turnover, especially in the middle middle of the diamond uh, with, with our shortstop second baseman situation, but just continuing to grind on them and, and emphasize, make the routine play and turn the double play. Um, if we can continue to do that, we're, we've got a chance to keep everybody in the game and I don't need them to go out and make highlight real plays. I need them to make the consistent routine run um, and make them very frequently. <laughs> So um, that's that's what I ask of our middle guys, and, and the range will come as, as we continue to move on. But those guys, uh, so far, have been a pretty good job.